Octopus Energy are always causing stirs in the energy market. Well, yet again, they've caused another stir, this time with solar, with a change in their terms and conditions regarding the MCS certificate. And what that means isn't exactly what I think Octopus were intending to do with it, but might actually have some other consequences as well down the line. So today's video, we're going to be talking about what Octopus might have been doing by changing these terms and conditions, what they're probably going to do now, and how it might result in some terrible solar installations. Now, Octopus Energy hasn't fully clarified which customers are going to be taking on through the non-MCS terms. However, it's likely that this was created to allow vehicle to grid homes without solar to be on the export system, because currently there is no MCS certificate for vehicle to grid chargers. And with this going to be the big forefront of Octopus plans this year, I think that that might be one of the reasons for this terms and conditions change. Also, battery customer only customers. So if you've just got a battery and you want to export, you're unlikely to have had an MCS uh, certificate fitted for that. Even though MCS do do a approval program just for batteries, it's unlikely that you would have got that done by an MCS provider only. So is this the real reason for the change of conditions? just to allow these two types of customers, or is Octopus now going to allow solar? Now, if you haven't got an MCS certificate for your solar, you can apply to Octopus during this beta trial phase for approval to have an export. Now, I'm not saying that they are going to accept every single person for solar export who haven't got an MCS certificate. It's in a trial phase. Like I said, I think it's more likely it's down for vehicle to grid and battery only customers, which are more likely not to have got any type of MCS approval because there wasn't one available to them at the time. Now, if you haven't got solar, you are not going to get solar export unless you meet some certain basic approvals, which is they're going to want to see a DNO, a DNO approval. So if you haven't got a G98 or a G99 and you have solar fitted, there is no chance on earth, even without the MCS certificate, that Octopus will accept you into export. That is something that's going to be needed as a absolute bare minimum. I also expect they'll want to see some kind of safety certificate, electrical certificate to say that the solar system has been tested and is therefore safe. Now, I think we're going to see some benefits from the MCS removal from Octopus Terms and Conditions, but I also think we're going to see some negatives. Let's first talk about the positives. It's likely going to mean that more solar is going to go on roofs and get approved for export than ever before because MCS has a very slow sign-up process. In fact, to become an MCS approved supplier can take a very, very long time. So if Octopus do accept customers without MCS approval, it might likely mean that engineers that are trained to fit solar and know how to fit solar who can't get MCS approval might be able to free up the work and get them installed fairly quick. It does, however, mean there's going to be some slight negatives down this route. And those negatives are we could see a return of some really dodgy solar installs. And that means people who are claiming they know how to fit solar but haven't got a clue what they're doing. And to be honest, solar and string inverters and the way they're set up, even people who think they know what they're doing make a lot of mistakes. And I've seen countless mistakes from people who are MCS approved who still make mistakes. So the ones that aren't MCS approved and aren't checked by MCS, well, they're going to likely make a hell of a lot more mistakes than someone who's MCS approved. Now, being an MCS approved installer does mean that you get audited and checked. So your work is assessed to basically make sure that you're meeting MCS standards. A non-MCS approved installer won't need to go through any of that. So we could see a return of almost the double glazing salesman sort of approach to solar again. Now I do think MCS needs to change. I think maybe they should have three tiers of MCS suppliers, bronze, silver, and gold, with the gold suppliers having more trusted and larger, better warranties backed by MCS. So if the company does go bust or anything like that happens and you put a deposit down, MCS will cover that. Now, the reason I mention that is before MCS approved installers, there's one very big one very recently where MCS took the MCS accreditation off them because they failed all the checks when the MCS went to go and assess them. This meant that that company then went into administration and customers that had deposits down for solar system lost all their money. Now MCS could help protect that by having three levels of protection where gold members paid a higher insurance level, meaning if they did lose their MCS approval, which would be unlikely, MCS would then foot the bill for any customers that put down deposits. Now before I mentioned messing up a solar install, 
can happen even with MCS approval. And that is because I know from first-hand experience on some commercial jobs I've had and friends who've had jobs done by MCS approved people that mistakes still happen. And that's because the whole thing with string inverters making off these cables with DC, there's a lot of places for human error to seep in. Well, recently I've been doing some videos with Heatable who are installing microinverters, which is just basically a plug and play system. There'll be a video of the install on this playlist soon. So if you're interested in getting solar, check out that or go to evnick.com forward slash solar where you can follow my real life journey through buying solar and getting battery storage down at my home.